Today we're going to take a look at the TIS multifunction eco tester and yes eco does mean it is reasonably priced but that doesn't mean you don't get some fantastic features and a couple of standout ones that we're going to highlight in this video and in order to do that I'm going to carry out the insulation resistance test on a circuit that Rick's installed here but before we do that I need to get him to remove all those loads. Rick! So Rick did you manage to remove all the loads on that line circuit for me? I did yeah. Remove the lamps, I've turned the light switch on, however, I've been flicking through Guidance Notes 3 um, and it's saying here if I link together line and neutral and test to earth, it should be alright. Yeah, but that means we haven't tested between our live conductors and I trust you, Rick, that you've removed all those loads, but wouldn't it be nice if your multifunction tester's got your back in case you've let me down, Rick? Well, let's not get into that too much. Uh, what's the biscuit today? Uh, we've got an Oreo double cream. Let's power up the TIS Eco, so press and hold the button, we've powered it up and then we can see the tests that we can carry out with the instrument. They're listed here, which we can scroll through to the appropriate one, one on that one, then we press again, we're back to our original first page and we're looking at doing that insulation resistance test. Press the button or enter and there it is, there is our test page. Now I've got it set already at the bottom here onto auto. I could have it on this one here, which is a manual test, so you can do them individually. And you've got one there where you can actually have the time of which you want to carry out that insulation resistance test for. So I've got it on auto. I've also set it here to 500 volts. That's the test voltage in DC. I could have been at 250, could have been at 1000 and anywhere in between. So we can come down and see the differing values we could have. We can test it at 500 volts and then I've got it here set to what I want it to be its pass value. And I've got that as one meg ohm. Okay, I could have changed that as I scroll through as well. So if I've got lower than one meg ohm, it will come up as a fail. But what's really good on this auto test, when I've connected all three leads, it will actually, first of all, ploy a voltage that starts to climb between my line and neutral conductors. And if it detects something's there, it will throttle back that voltage so it doesn't pass too high a voltage through them and damage it. In other words, it's a little Rick check. So if Rick hasn't removed all the loads, it will actually spot that for me before carrying out the test between our line and protective earth and neutral and protective earth. So we're going to see how well Rick's done about removing those loads. So I've connected my lead into my MFT Eco and I'm ready to carry out the test. I've chosen the tip commander lead because I can press and start my test by using this button here, meaning I don't have to take my hands off in order to press the go button on the machine. If I want any help, just press this button here and it shows you my leads are connected in positions four, three and one. So when I tip it forward, you can see I'm in four, three and one. One's the position of that tip commander lead. I could have used a standard lead like the one just here, but it would have meant I had to press the go button on the machine in order to carry out the test. You need to be careful, you need to come out of this screen, press the help button again in order to carry out the insulation resistance test on the auto mode. So I'm going to connect onto my earth bar, I'm going to connect onto my neutral connection, and then I'm going to use the tip commander in order to start the testing process. I'm in there, when I press and hold this you'll hear the machine click, so press and hold. The machine has clicked, the test is underway, and we can see at the top we're testing between our line and neutral first. Once it's completed the test on that one, it'll come down and do our line protective earth, and then finally our neutral and protective earth. So currently testing between line and neutral, so it's looking to see if Rick's left anything in circuit. I can see a little light out the corner of my eye flash, and I'm a little bit worried. So it's done that first one. It's dropped down now between line and protective earth. It's brought my voltage straight up now to my 500 volt test voltage, and it's doing its insulation resistance test. So it's trying to achieve a reading in mega ohms and then it'll drop down and do my neutral and protective earth when it's happy with that one. So now we're onto the final one. So it brings up the voltage straight away. So we're happy with the voltage, we're testing the correct voltage and we're looking for the insulation resistance test on the other one. So we're slightly higher than before. So there are my, oh, not okay. So we've left something in circuit. I'm sure Rick's standing around with a cup of tea in one hand and a biscuit in the other, but he hasn't removed all our loads. But what's really nice is it's actually throttled back that voltage not to damage that equipment, but now we can search out the piece of equipment that's been left in circuit and repeat the test. What's that over there, guys? Let's repeat the test again. Press and hold the button, we should hear a click, and we're underway. But what's really nice about that first test, about the MFT Eco, it held back that voltage, meaning that we didn't damage the LED strip that Rick forgot to turn off, and the keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed the switch is in the wrong way round. So up is on, and down is off. Okay, so I'll be having a word with Rick in the future about that one. And we can see now with that load been removed, we're cycling through, first of all, our line and neutral, just again checking that Rick hasn't left anything else in circuit. Once it's happy with the line and neutral, it will drop down and do line and protective earth, and then neutral and protective earth. So we've done the first one now. So it's actually tested over 500 volts, and it has an insulation resistance test reading 
of 550 meg ohms and now we're on to the second one and we're cycling through so i've got my hands in the consumer unit i'm looking at the screen here i'm not had to press any test buttons on the machine and it's automatically carrying out the insulation resistance test but it's there saving you from making a mistake isn't it from actually leaving a load in circuit and here we go so we should be able to get our final reading between our neutral and protective earth and hopefully this time it'll say that we've uh, in a, oh we're okay this time if you also work with a right rick maybe it's time to go out and buy a tis mft eco tester however if you want to know how to carry out a two lead earth fault loop impedance using true rms check out the video on screen just there rick's left me one <laughs> 